Hey folks, uh, Mr. Bullock here again, and this uh, uh, Algebra 2 lesson is on uh, hyperbola. So we're going to graph and write equations on hyperbolas. All right, so hyperbolas, uh, the equations look just like ellipses, you guys, except instead of a plus sign between them, they have a minus sign. You see how this looks just like the last lesson on ellipses? Except the ellipses had a plus sign right there. So if it's horizontal, it looks like this, x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. If it's vertical, then it's y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1. Depending on which one comes first tells me whether it's a horizontal or vertical. Okay, and so if x comes first, it's horizontal. And you just think, you know, x is left and right movement, so if x comes first, it's going to be horizontal. And uh, vertical is up and down movement, so if y comes first, which is an up and down movement, then it's vertical, you guys. And hyperbolas look like a parabola and a mirror image, you guys. So we've graphed parabolas before, so just think of the parabola and the mirror image. Okay, so uh, the characteristics of hyperbolas is uh, both the variables, the x and the y's, are both being squared. So as long as both are being squared and it's separated by a minus sign, Okay, ellipses and circles, they're both being squared except it's separated by a plus sign, okay? So these are both hyperbolas. If only one's being squared, then that's a parabola. That would be section 9-2. Okay, it depends on which one comes first. It does not depend on the bigger number. On ellipses, it depends on the bigger number, okay? I don't care if A is bigger than B or if A is less than B. I want to know, does X squared come first or does Y squared come first? That tells me if it's horizontal or vertical. All right, and then um, since uh, uh, I say to students, since uh, uh, hyperbolas have a minus sign, then my c squared formula is going to have a plus sign. In the last lesson, ellipses had plus signs, so you find out that the c squared formula had a minus sign. It's the same c squared formula, except if it's a hyperbola with a minus sign right there, my c squared formula is going to be a squared plus b squared on ellipses. That would have been a plus, and my c squared formula would have been a squared minus b squared, okay? So hyperbolas, we want the plus right there. And my focus, this is where I get my focus points, is from my c, okay? So the graphs of hyperbolas. Okay, so here's a horizontal one. Notice that x is coming first. x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. If it doesn't equal 1, then we divide by it to make it equal to 1. Divide by whatever this number is right here, right there, if it's not equal to 1, okay? Don't let that scare you, you guys. It's nothing big, you guys, okay? So so I know, to, I know it's going to be this hyperbola that's going to be going like this. See, this looks like a parabola right here, and this looks like the mirror image of the parabola. So that's what a hyperbola is. It's a parabola and it's mirror image. Okay, I know it's horizontal, so it's, it's shooting like this. Okay, it's horizontal because uh, the x squared comes first. And I square root underneath the x, and that tells me my vertices. So I square root a squared, which is a. So I go, this. notice, this is negative a0, and this is positive a0, okay? And notice those are uh, horizontal, so a0 is horizontal. If 0 comes first, it's vertical, you guys. So uh, if it's uh, plus or minus a0, like here, plus or minus a0, it has my x-intercepts. So this guy, since it's uh, horizontal, has x-intercepts, and those are my vertices. It doesn't have any y-intercepts, because your graph is not up here. Your graph is over here, okay? So uh, my x-intercepts are plus or minus the square root underneath the x. There is no y-intercept, okay? Uh, let's see, what else? So then we, how, we, how we graph this is we, we first plot the vertice points, okay? So the, uh, here's a zero and here's negative a zero we first plot those guys then we draw the dotted box and your dotted box is always um, a by b okay so go over a and go up b and where do you get a and b you square it underneath the x square it underneath the y okay and then once you get this box right here the box determines these diagonals and these diagonals are my asymptotes, you guys. So now we draw the asymptotes by connecting the diagonals of a box. So we pick up a straight edge and we connect the diagonals of the box. And the, the asymptotes tell me how wide my hyperbola is going to be. It's my bounded by. So it's like my boundaries of how wide I want to make my hyperbola. Okay, and we get the asymptotes from the diagonals of the box. And the box are. Um, square root under that, square root under that. So I go over A, up B, okay? And the asymptotes, uh, the focus points, so don't forget your focus points are found by, since this has a minus sign, C squared formula has a plus sign. So I get my focus points that way, you guys. 
So I, I, I just add these numbers. Here's a squared, here's b squared. So I just add those, and that's what c squared is. And then square root it, and I know um, uh, right here uh, that they're going to be horizontal because it's a horizontal hyperbola. Okay, notice here's a right there. That's a. This length is a. Over here, this length is a. Here's c from the center all the way out here to the focus. So on hyperbolas, C is always larger than A. On ellipses, C was smaller than A. Okay? All right. And then the asymptotes have equation plus or minus uh, B over AX. And how I think of this is, remember in Algebra 1, Y equals MX plus B? Well, my plus B is this little plus 0 right there. So here's my Y equals MX plus 0 right here. Okay? My M is my slope. Do you remember slope formula? y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. The y's were always on top and the x's were always on bottom on slope. Well, this square root of this number is, is the number underneath the y. So there's my square root of y and then square root of x goes under here. So this is like my difference of y's over difference of x's. So y's over x's x. So we'll plus or minus that right there. Don't let that confuse you too much. It'll unwind with problems. Verticals, same thing except it's a vertical. Okay, since y squared's coming first, it's vertical, so it's going to have y intercepts right there and right there. And my y intercepts are square root underneath the y. There are no x intercepts on, on vertical hyperbolas. Okay, so draw the vertices first. The vertices are your y intercepts or plus or minus or zero plus or minus the square root of this guy right here. Okay, then we draw our box. Our box on this one are square root underneath the x. That's how much I go left and right. So I go left uh, B, and then I square root underneath the Y, and that's how much I go up. And so that'll be my box dimension. So to the left B, to the right B, up A, down A. Okay, and then draw, use your straight edge and draw your box. And then we connect uh, the diagonals of the box, and those are my asymptotes. Okay, the asymptotes tell me how wide my hyperbola is. Okay. All right, and then uh, don't forget your c-squared formula is to get your focus points in. And notice here it is, square root underneath the y, square root underneath the x. So look, this is underneath the y right there, okay? This is underneath the x, so square root that. So those are my asymptote equations, okay? So it's just, remember, it goes rise over run. So this is up y over x, which is up a over b, okay? So rise over run. All right, let's try some of these. So graph 25x squared minus 4y squared equals 100. Identify the vertices, the focus, and asymptotes of this hyperbola. I know it's a hyperbola because that's squared, that's squared, and it's separated by a minus sign. Okay, it has to equal 1. So I'm going to divide everything by 100 to make it equal 1. So here we go. Okay, now... Y's first, so this one tells me it's a vertical hyperbola, okay? has uh, Y intercepts. My vertices are plus or minus the square root of that number, so 2. So it's at 0, 2, and 0, negative 2. So let's go ahead and graph that. So since uh, the Y's first, it's vertical, so there's my, uh, my vertices right there at 0, 2, and 0, negative 2 right there. Okay, next we're going to draw the box. So I square root underneath this X, which tells me I go to the left and right 5. I go up and down 2. Okay, so that's my box. So there's my box right there. To the left and right, 5, up and down, 2. Then I pick up my straight edge and I connect my diagonals with a dotted line. Those are my asymptotes. That tells me how wide my hyperbola is going to be. Okay, and it's going through this vertex here, this vertex and this vertex. So you just flare it out. So it's going to be um, a hyperbola that flares out and goes out towards these asymptotes. Probably should have made those asymptotes a little bit longer. I, I didn't. But anyways, there it is right there. So the hyperbola goes through the vertices and flares towards those asymptotes. It tells me how wide. This one's a wide one, okay, because I got a long skinny box right there. Okay, let's get the focus points, you guys. The focus points are uh, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So, so here's A squared, here's B squared, so add those together, I get 29. So the focus points are vertical, because it's a vertical um, hyperbola, so it has the coordinates 0, comma, plus or minus the square root of 29. Okay, so there's one focus point, there's one focus point. Square root of 29 is a little bit more than 5, you guys, like 5 points, I don't know, 2, something like that. Okay, uh, oops, I didn't get the asymptotes on this. The asymptotes have equations, well, shame on me, I didn't get that. So my asymptotes are going to be y equals plus or minus up 2 over 5x. So so plus or minus 2 fifths x, that would be my asymptotes, okay? So remember, up, over, so 
So y x, okay, y is up and then x is over, plus or minus 2 fifths x. Okay, let's do the same for this one. Divide by 1, or by, by 36, I'm sorry. And then this one times x comes first. So since x comes first, it has x-intercepts. And it's going to be um, horizontals. My x-intercepts are plus or minus 3. So let's go ahead and graph those guys first. Okay, all right, so then uh, my box is going to be 3 by 2. I square root underneath those. So go to the left 3 and then go up 2. So to the right 3 and then down 2 and make your box. Okay. Then connect your diagonals. Those are your asymptotes right here. Okay. Remember it's horizontal because x is first. So it's going to be going like this. This one isn't going to be as wide as the other one because it's going to flare towards the asymptotes. So let's go ahead and draw the hyperbola. Okay, and then let's get the focus point. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Here's A squared is 9. B squared is 4, so I get 13. And since it's horizontal, then my focus points are horizontal. So it's going to have horizontal coordinates, plus or minus root 13, comma 0. Okay, I probably didn't get the asymptotes on this one either, but it's going to be, the asymptotes are going to be Y equals plus or minus 2 thirds x. Okay, y equals plus or minus two thirds x. All right, write an equation of the hyperbola with the foci, uh, negative plus or minus four zero, and vertices plus or minus three zero. Okay, okay, you got to look. Are these horizontal or are they vertical? Okay, and if zero is on the y coordinate, then these guys are horizontal. So I go to the left four, up four. Let's get a general idea what it looks like. I guess I didn't do that on this one. Okay, all right, so because the foci and vertices are on the x-axis, this parabola is horizontal. So it gives us this idea that the x squared comes first. Okay, my a is my vertices. There's a right there. So if I square that, that's going to be 9. That's what goes underneath here. I don't know what b is. I do know that that's c, though, because your foci, your c in foci, gives me my c right there. So I know c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Here's a, so a squared is 9. So if I plug 16 in right there, plug 9 in right there, I get b squared equaling 7. Okay, so that's what goes right there. Okay, a squared is 9 goes right there. So x squared over 9 minus y squared over 7 equals 1. All right, okay, if you're in my class, I would assign that as your homework. Take care.